In this video, we will be looking at graphing trig functions including phase shifts and the other transformations. Depending on what you're looking at, you might see this described with several steps. I've tried to simplify this, make it a little more general to get at the key points that you need. For your first uh, step, I will ask you to find the period and phase shift and use the bookend method to accomplish this. In your second step, you will be labeling the x-axis. Now you'll have to consider that you will need to uh, always divide the period into four sub-intervals. So we're doing the period divided by four and whatever my phase shift is. This will require a common denominator, which in some cases uh, is a little tricky. We'll see one example of that in this video. In my third step, we're going to label the y-axis using A, or the amplitude in the case of sine and cosine, and the vertical shift, which gives us a new baseline. In step four, you will plot the points carefully. Now, one way you could do this is to make a table of values. I'm actually going to show you how to do that right now without that table. So let's take a look at our first example right here. I have three times the cosine of 2x minus pi plus 1. So to begin, I'm going to figure out that my period is 2 pi divided by this 2 right here. So that is pi. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my bookend method to find my phase shift and really to find where I will be graphing. So 0 is less than or equal to 2x minus pi, which is less than or equal to the cosine we go from 0 to 2 pi. So then we will add pi to all three parts of this. I will then divide by 2. And I can see that my phase shift is pi over 2. That's a positive pi over 2, meaning I will be going pi over 2 to the right of the y-axis. All right. So my next step will be to figure out how I need to label my y-axis, excuse me, my x-axis. So my phase shift is pi over 2 in the positive direction, so in to the right. My period is pi so my period over 4 is pi over 4. This is good. My period is pi over 4. My phase shift is pi over 2. I can just use 4 as my common denominator. So I'm going to do that right over here. My phase shift is to the right, so I don't need any negative values. I'll start with 0, and here will be pi over 4. Try and space these out evenly. 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4 is pi. 5 pi over 4. And then 6 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 2. Now something to note, the value of the bookend method is it's going to tell me where to graph. My standard cosine undergoes a series of transformations. And that standard cosine, the graph I would normally be looking at from 0 to 2 pi, is transformed. And I will graph it between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So I will graph from here to here. Okay, You're welcome to use something like a highlighter or just a couple arrows to note where you will in fact be graphing. Okay, My third step is to take care of the y-axis. So, I can see I have a vertical shift of up one unit. So I will mark that here. There is one. And I can also see a stretch of three, which is going to give me an amplitude for my cosine of three. So I see here up to one unit, two units, three units, up to four. I will also go down zero, negative one, and negative two is three units below. So when I do this, it's a good idea. My baseline is at 1. So I'm going to put a dashed line right there. If you wish to mark off the 4 and the negative 2, which will be the highest and lowest that you go when you graph this, you are welcome to do that as well. 
You can also do something like just using a highlighter to say that's where I'm headed. All right. So you can do this using a table of values. That's entirely possible. If you did this using a table of values, what would we see? Well, my x, I start at pi over 2. And I know I'll end at 3 pi over 2. And in between, I know I'm counting by pi over 4. So this is 2 pi over 4, next is 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, and 5 pi over 4. You're welcome to do this with a table of values. As I said, I just don't find it necessary, and I'm going to show you how I would do it. You can also go down here. These correspond to our typical cosine values. So typically, cosine, if I was going from and again, this is the value that would give me an angle up here of 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, and then count through them, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. And what I have up in here is 3 times these cosines plus 1. So this would give me 3 times 1 plus 1, which is 4 and 3 times 0 plus 1, which is 1, and 3 times negative 1 plus 1, which is negative 2, and 3 times 0 plus 1, which is 1, and 3 times 1 plus 1, which is 4. You're welcome to do something like this, but I find it much simpler to think about it this way. From my bookend methods, I know I will be graphing between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. I know this is a cosine. The cosine graph that I'm used to seeing starts at the highest part of my range. There's no reflection here, so that is exactly what I will do. I will start up at my highest point, up here at 4. Then as I move through the cosine, I start at the highest point, and I go to the middle. Then I will go all the way down to the lowest point. I come back up to the middle and I come back up to the top. If I need more points, I'm welcome to continue this pattern. Uh, up here, I went high, mid, low, mid, high. Next up would be the middle. Over here, I would have the middle. And then at zero, I'd be at the bottom. But focusing on these key points, I'm going to put a curve through them. Nice, smooth cosine curve. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be nice and curvy. We also want to note that these points at the top and bottom of the range, the graph turns right as it goes through them, so make sure you're noting that. Put some arrows on the end if you feel necessary. Um, I will oftentimes just leave it like this. Because really what happens is the pattern continues rather than saying everything's down here. The pattern continues is what I would see after this. Now, as I went through this, as I graphed this, I actually answered all of the questions of amplitude and so forth. My amplitude was 3. There was no reflection in the x-axis. My period, I found, was pi. The vertical shift was up 1. My phase shift was pi over 2 to the right. My domain any general sine or cosine has the same domain, negative infinity to infinity. And the range, well, the smallest I go is negative 2, and the largest I go is 4. But doing it this way, I believe, simplifies the method of graphing. My cosine starts up high, so I start up high, then I go to the middle, I go down to the bottom, middle, all the way to the top. High, middle, low, middle, high. And then I could continue if I needed to. All right. Let's do some other examples. Pardon me. I had a duplicate paper there rather than the additional examples. Here we go. Here, 
I have a sine curve. So again, I will start off with my bookend method, and I can figure out my period. I see this 4 right here, so my period must be 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. All right then. So, my bookend method. 0 is less than or equal to 4 times x plus pi over 8, which is less than or equal to 2 pi. You can distribute the 4 first if you feel like it, but it is also very easy to divide everything by 4. If I divide by 4, 0 divided by 4 is 0. Dividing a 4 from the middle just eliminates this 4. And 2 pi divided by 4 is pi over 2. My next move is going to be subtracting pi over 8. Pi over 2 minus pi over 8. Well, pi over 2 a half is four eighths, so if I take away one eighth, I'll be left with three eighths. I'm left with three pi over eight. So I can see my period is pi over two. I can see my phase shift is pi over eight to the right, excuse me, to the left. My period over four is pi over two times four, that's pi over eight. So this is good, because this means I will just be counting by this very increment. I need to go to the left of the y-axis, so here is negative pi over 8, and then 0, and pi over 8, 2 pi over 8 is pi over 4, and 3 pi over 8 is right here. I could keep going. But again, my bookend methods have told me to graph from negative pi over 8 to 3 pi over 8. All right. Now let's prep our y-axis. Well, I can see here that there is a vertical shift 3 units up. And when I look at my sine function, there's a negative in front. The amplitude is not changed. There is no vertical sh uh, stretch or compression, but there is a reflection, which means I will go one below three and one above three at my largest. Everything that's going to happen will happen between two and four. I'm going to draw in my middle line, my baseline. Okay. Now I come to the point of plotting. So again, if I need to do this, I'm going from negative pi over 8 to 3 pi over 8. In this case, since I have a sine, sine typically starts in the middle. Now normally, sine starts in the middle and then goes up. Since there is a reflection here, I will start in the middle and go down. So I go middle, then low, back to the middle, back up high, and then to the middle. As best as I can, I'll put a nice smooth wave, smooth sine curve through those points. If I wanted to, I could continue this out, get more of my graph. But this is the uh, essential part of the graph that we do need to plot. Now again, in doing this, we've actually answered all of these questions. The amplitude is 1. There is a reflection in the x-axis. The period we discovered was pi over 2. Vertical shift was 3 units up. My phase shift was pi over 8 left. My domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. And my range, I can see, goes from 2 up to 4. All right, I want to do one more example. In example three, I have the function f of x is equal to negative two times the cosine of three x minus pi over four plus two. So I start off by figuring out what my period is and doing my bookends. So if I do this, two pi divided by three, 
Well, that doesn't simplify. That's just going to be my period. If I do the bookend method, well, I will have 0 is less than or equal to 3x minus pi over 4, which is less than or equal to 2 pi. Adding pi over 4 to all three parts will give me 2 is 8 fourths, so adding gives me 9 fourths. And now I will divide by 3. So if I divide by 3, pi over 4 will become pi over 12. 9 pi over 4 is 9 pi over 12, or simplify the 3 with the 9 to get 3 pi over 4. All right. So I now I have my period is 2 pi over 3. I have my phase shift is pi over 12 to the right. Before I can label my x-axis, I also need to consider the period over 4. So this would be 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. Now here we see something interesting. Pi over 6 and pi over 12. To get a common denominator, I will have to use pi over 12. So I cannot actually count by a fourth of my period, which is really what we want. That would be ideal. So how will this play out? There are a couple ways you could look at this. If you count by pi over 12, which is the most direct way of doing it, pi over 12, 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6. 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4. 4 pi over 12 is pi over 3. 5 pi over 12 does not simplify. 6 pi over 12 is pi over 2. 7 pi over 12. 8 pi over 12 is 2 pi over 3. 9 pi over 12 is 3 pi over 4. Notice I had to extend my x-axis there to do this well. And you might be wondering, well, compared to the other problems, why did I have to plot so many marks on my x-axis? And the answer is because my phase shift is less than a quarter of that period doesn't line up with the quarters of my period, I have to add in these extra marks on the x-axis. I will be going from pi over 12 to 3 pi over 4 based on my bookend method. But here's where this gets a bit tricky. I will be doing that, but since I still will be going by pi over 6 each time, I will end up skipping one of these every time. So rather than going pi over 12, pi over 6, pi over 4, I will use pi over 12, and then I will use pi over 4, and then I will use 5 pi over 12, and then I will use 7 pi over 12, and finally 3 pi over 4. I'll show you that and again when we're ready to graph in just a minute. My y-axis. I go up two units. The amplitude is 2 and there is a reflection. So everything will happen between 0 and 4. I'm going to go ahead and extend that a little bit more. So I can use my highlighter if I feel I need to. Everything's happening at 0, 2, or 4. And again, this is the odd part. My period over 4 is pi over 6. So normally I might have counted by pi over 6. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, 2 pi over 3. But since my phase shift is in the middle there, I need these additional markings. When I graph, that means I will skip pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3. I've just gently crossed those out. Okay. 
here is where I will be graphing. Because this is half of one fourth of my period, I end up skipping every other mark that I've just made. So this is a cosine. Cosine normally starts up high. Since there is a reflection, I will instead start down low. So I start low, then I go to the middle. Now remember, I have to skip the next one. That's why I've gently crossed these out. Go up to pi over 4. Excuse me, at pi over 4, I'll go up to the middle, 2. At 5 pi over 12, I'll go up to the top. At 7 pi over 12, I'm back to the middle. And at 3 pi over 4, I will be, once again, at the bottom of my range along the x-axis. As best I can, I will put a nice smooth curve through these points. And that is my cosine. In these situations where the phase shift is uh, inconvenient or not ideal, expect something like this where you'll have to add additional markings and skip every so often on your x-axis. Again, we've done all the analysis as we've worked through this. And my range is from 0 to 4. I hope this has helped. And of course, remember to ask your questions when I see you next.